Okay, greetings. Welcome to Unlimited Power, the new channel dedicated to Star Wars Unlimited. We're going to be talking about the new TCG launching in 2024. Uh, I am John. I should be here most weeks along with Mark and Tony. Do you want to say a couple of words about yourselves, guys? Hello, I'm Mark, and that's Tony. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we're here. What do, what do you want to know? We're, we're nerds. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here yeah. every week. We'll be answering we're questions. Stripes. We'll be learning how the hell we play this game, and hopefully we'll be playing it sooner rather than later. You may, be, you, you may see some of your first games of Star Wars Unlimited right here on this channel. You're so, definitely uh, going to see my first game of Star Wars Unlimited yeah. on this channel. Perfect. Um, so I'm a colossal Star Wars lore nerd. John's a colossal Star Wars lore nerd. I don't, Tony isn't really. Well, no, that's not fair. Um, okay. I am, but I'm old. Yeah, you like the original that, three movies. To be I, fair, I, I like the original I'm three. I'm massively colossal Star Wars nerd for the old stuff. So the old, like, what they call it now, Star Wars Legends. Yep. So yep. massively nerdy about the Star Wars Legends, but the new Star Wars stuff is not quite so exciting for me. Which is why I'm so excited about this one, because A, I haven't really got into a TCG since I was a teenager, and B... It seems to be really based on the stuff that I care about. You know, it's got Luke Skywalker, we've got Darth Vader, uh, Han Solo and Princess Leia yep. on there, and that's that's pretty much what Star Wars is for me. That's at least um, initially the first set. You're absolutely right. So that's why I'm so excited about really diving into something a bit new, really. Okay, perfect. So this video is going to be us covering the the game or the, the way you play a game of Star Wars Unlimited. Uh, it's going to be a very quick introduction, I guess. If you do like what we do, hit subscribe. We're going to be here multiple weeks. We're going to cover every aspect of this game. And yep. um, for now, we're just going to sort of dive into the first rule. So I've made some slides on how we play the game. Let's jump yep. to the next one. And um, there may be questions. You can leave them in the comments and we'll do our very best to yeah, answer them. Do. As time goes by, John will try and keep us all on the straight and narrow, but we'll almost certainly talk more and more crap around it. So uh, yep. hopefully uh, that will be a fun and amusing to everybody. Yeah, so this first look then on how to play, and I, I put this picture here of the starter set. From what, I, from what I gather, this is a set they'll be releasing early next year. It's going to contain two decks. One is yep. essentially a Luke Skywalker deck, one is essentially a Darth Vader deck. And most of these cards are already available to see if you follow Fantasy Flight Games. Yeah, you can... they've, they've been spoiled or, or shared pretty much widely on the internet one way or the other. But I mean, I think we'll probably all buy this starter deck when it comes out. Um, but for okay. now, for now, we're not really talking about the starter deck. We're going to talk about the rules. So let's look at how you play the game. Okay. So you start a game of Star Wars Unlimited. I feel like I'm going to say Star Wars Legion because obviously we play the miniatures game Legion. So if we if we do say that, um, but yeah, so right, you start we'll the game. You if you get it wrong, don't worry. Uh, you both sit down at the table. Um, you put your base into play at the center of the table. So you can see here that the the rebel base is the administrator tower in Cloud City, and the imperial base, which is upside down at the moment, is the command center on the Death Star. They both have thirty health. Um, so you each put your base into play, and then you put your leader card beneath your base. And that's 30 health. That's your life as a player. When that's down to zero, game over. That is the objective of the game, to reduce your opponent's base you, health to zero. Do you know what? I'm going to start this off with some salty moaning. Go because on. if we've got an administrator's tower, then we need the administrator of this facility. Do we? Well, we haven't had him previewed yet, as far as I've seen. So, uh, do you know what I mean? You, you probably. If will I've be got able the administration get... of this facility, that's a proper. <laughs> oh, it'd be really cool if you get Lobot as a leader, but it's far yeah. more likely you're going to get um, Lando as a leader at some point. To yeah, go with it. I want I want Lando so I could make jokes. Jokes. I don't care. Yeah. It's good. Jokes. Jokes. <laughs> Um, okay, so next, you randomly determine which player starts the game with the initiative, and you give that player the initiative counter. Once that's done, both players shuffle their decks and draw a hand of six. You're allowed to mulligan once, uh, which you shuffle the entire deck or hand back into your deck, and then you pick a new six. However, after your mulligan, you're stuck with what you've got, no matter what. Yeah. Um, a couple of quick things in there, if I may interject slightly. Um, the minimum deck size is 50. Uh, oh, you good. can build a larger deck if you want to, but the smallest you can bring is 50, and most competitive decks will therefore probably be 50 cards. 
uh, you're allowed a maximum of three of each of card types. So if you want to build a competitive deck, you only need to worry about three, getting three copies of any given card or a given rare or whatever. Perfect. And I assume that your leader is unique. I actually yes. don't know. But you only ever he's... need the one copy of the leader. You never need more than that. Yeah. Okay, uh, and after that, each player chooses two cards from their hand to play face down in front of them, and these essentially become your resource tiles. Yeah. So uh, when reading through this, it basically this is like mana. So you pick two yeah. cards that you maybe can't cast early in the game exactly because they're right. too high resource. You put them down. From my understanding, once they're down as resources, you can never use them as anything other than resources. There, there may are now... be mechanics that come later in the game that allow you to take them back, maybe, but we, I don't believe we've seen them yet. Right. So, I certainly haven't seen them yet. So you've got your two resources in turn one, and then we're going to cover how you get more resources uh, later on as we move through the slides. So let's go for it. Yeah, just as a, a very brief going in there, in case Tony hasn't got this I'm, I'm... Not, you said you're not much of a CCG player, so no. um, each card of the type that you haven't seen here yet will have a cost in the top left corner. Um, you need to pay the cost of playing them out of your resources, and you tap a resource, which is turn it 90 degrees to the right, and that gives you a resource point to spend on a thing that you're like casting or bringing into play. And then okay. at the end of the turn, they untap it and you do it all over again. So this is what the game would look like set up then so you would basically have both bases opposite each other you would have your two resources your enemies two resources the four cards in your hands and then you've both got your own deck so this is basically like the starting point of a game of star wars legion this yeah. is what it will look like on the tabletop obviously they mentioned stand out as it goes yeah yeah they mentioned the initiative counter i guess this is basically the point where you would choose someone's going to have the initiative so they're going first yeah are we going to have a little like tally board every time you call it star wars legion I've already done it, did I? Yeah. <laughs> I've got Brilliant. Imperial Assault up here as well, behind me on the green screen. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you could call that too. Um, got any Shatterpoint? Point? Got any Armada? <laughs> I played Armada. That was pretty good. You know what? I didn't get round to Shatter Point. I think I'm going to do this instead of Shatter Point. So, okay. Um, this is less miniature to paper, which is a good thing. All right, next slide. Yeah, all right, next slide. So taking action. So most of the game in Star Wars Unlimited takes place in the action phase. In this phase, players go back and forth taking a single action at a time. The player with initiative counter takes the first action and then their opponent acts and so on until both players have passed. The actions available to each player are play a card, attack with a unit, use an ability add, oh, excuse me, use an action ability, take the initiative and pass. So I think what it means there by both players have passed basically means you have finished your turn and you That's say, exactly right. I'm yeah. done, I pass. Once you've passed or taken the initiative, you are saying, I've got nothing left to do this turn. That's it, I'm done. Yes. Um, so the first option, which is play a card, involves you exhausting, which is uh, what Mark called tapping earlier. Some players will call it tapping. I guess this game is specifically calling it exhausting, which yeah. basically tapping, means... I think might be a term that magic has magic the gathering yeah uh well they, they definitely pioneered it whether they've um uh, copyrighted it yeah is, is another thing but tapping okay. is just like reflexive so it's exhausting or tapping so you turn your uh, resource card sideways you do that for a number of resources equal to the cost on the top left of the card there if you scrunch yeah. your eyes up you can see r2d2 costs one and a mm -hmm. snow speeder costs five and uh, once once exhausted, a resource cannot be used again until it is readied, which is basically like almost like there's a ready yeah. step at the end of the turn. Um, there is another complication in there with regards to costs, but it's getting into the advanced mechanics, and we'll cover that in a little bit. Okay, all right. Remember that because I don't know if I have anything else about costs no, so in these in that slides. Case, no, no, go on, so, Tony, ask your question. Go on. So here's a question um, We've got our resources at the bottom of the field. Yep. Um, and in the picture before and the picture there, we have them face down. So your opponent can't see what yeah. they are. They're all they don't face do anything. Down. Yeah, there's no mechanics um, on them. They're just a faceless resource. Okay, but we also see R two D two has been put on play there, um, yep. and he's been put down horizontally as well. Yeah. Does that mean he's been tapped, or does that mean that he's been brought out to play? When, Why is when, he horizontal? When they're put into play, uh, I can't remember if when they're put into play they come into play. Yeah, so I've got this on my very next slide, I believe. Okay. okay. Um, if the if a card is exhausted, it cannot attack. Um, if it has an ability on the card that requires you to exhaust it to do it, then you can't exhaust it again. So it's kind of like coming into play, and you can't use it straight away to just launch a preemptive strike into your opponent's base or something. 
Yeah, okay. that's pretty much that's pretty much it. In a so nutshell, when you put so... your guy down, you've got to put him down sideways to say he can't do anything this turn. He's going to come and play next turn. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, that makes uh, sense. Uh, I think in case it's not later on in here. What I was going to say briefly, the resources cost that a card has um, can go up if you don't match various icons that are in your base and your leader. And this is how you have kind of a uh, a list of what your deck is flavoured to do. So Luke is a vigilant, a protector. He's a hero. Um, and the administrator building uh, adds a sort of, I think it's a cunning ability in there, a cunning colour. These are the icons in the top right of each card. There's a blue and a green one on Luke and a yellow one on the top right of the administrator building. Mm -hmm. You can play cards that have those aspects, but if you want to play a card that has an aspect not on your leader or your bases, it costs two extra resource points to play for each aspect that you don't already have access to. So is that just a flat two? Or so let's say he costs one, does he and now he would cost three. But if I've got one that costs three, does it now cost five or does it cost six? Say it's plus two on top so of it's just the a flat listed. two. Doesn't matter how much it costs space. Yeah. It's and if there are two aspect two tokens on the card you're trying to play that you don't have access to, that'd be plus four and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I haven't covered that in the slide, so it's good to know. I guess that's this is it's this getting a bit very first video there, so, is like yeah. the very very basics. So that's what so, I try to I, dive into. My all right, no, 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 it's good to know. Um, it's good to know there's more depth. All right, here's oh, a wall. Oh, that's a wall of text. Wall, of, wall text of text. You're not going to read right? it all out, are you? Um, can you can you summarize it? I can try and summarize it. So when you play a unit, it comes into play exhausted. Uh, mm -hmm. There is two spaces you can play units into. You play them into the ground area or the space yeah. area. You imagine if you like wonder... left of the base or right of the base. Yeah. So one section is ground, one section is space. Obviously, you would put stuff like an X-wing into yeah. the flying area and something like R2D2 into the ground area. So as um, your battle's going on, imagine there's fighting taking place on the ground and in space around the base that you've chosen. Yeah. Uh, and then some cards that said have a when played ability on them. So, for example, a Viper Probe Droid, when you uh, play it, you get to look into your opponent's hand. Or like an Imperial Inceptor, it said, when you play it, you can deal damage to a space unit. So I guess like the, the Imperial Inceptor would come into the play, tapped, exhausted, yeah. but it would uh, it would get to do three damage instantly because that's like a when played ability, almost like a first strike type ability. Mm -hmm. um, you can also play upgrades. It talked about being able to upgrade a unit using Luke Skywalker's saber, for example. Um, and it also said you didn't necessarily need to give Luke his saber. Like you could give Luke's saber to someone else, but it might not be as effective if you give it to yeah. another unit It'll as have opposed to when used on certain synergies. Yeah, and like Darth Vader's saber, it said like you could do four damage to a ground unit when you play Darth Vader's saber if you play it on Darth Vader. Obviously, I guess because he throws a saber, other yeah. other units can't do that. And then the third type of card you can play is an event. Now they said events are a bit more of a like a in depth mechanic. Like and they a didn't one shot. They're one and gone basically. Uh, they didn't cover too many different events, but they did say that there was like an events like uh, maximize firepower, so you could focus damage or something like that, or potentially have a shield for an allied unit. Yeah, there's, um, a, there's a force choke. There's all sorts of events all over the place. Cool. Whatever special one-off power that you want to use and then discard the card for can be covered in an event. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can pause this and read this uh, if you want, but basically you are playing ground units, space units, or something special, yep. like an event. Which straight away leads you into some more deck building strategic ideas. Do you go heavily into space in your deck? Do you go heavily into ground? Do you go in a mix of the two? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, there's a good... If you went all ground units... Um, and the opponent maybe went all space units, then it should almost be like a, a race yeah. to see who kills the other person's space first, right? So you're probably going to balance it, but there's nothing to say you couldn't try something different. Indeed. All right. Um, will we so, go to the next slide? Another question then. Yes. Um, I don't know if you're going to cover this. You've mentioned your own HP and your card's HP. So they track yep. separately. How are units, they tracked? Units' hit points are indeed tracked separately to a base's hit points. Uh, if a unit takes damage, just use like a D6 or D8 or something to put it on the card and it's taken that much damage and it's persistent throughout the game until they're healed or they're destroyed and gotten rid of. Yeah. So, so you're gonna, you want to bring a lot of D6 or something along with you when you play this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Yeah. <coughs> okay, next slide. All right. 
Um, okay, so attacking with a unit. Um, let me see if I can condense this. Basically, when you attack with a unit, you would tap it. Uh, units have a red number on their card. Um, they have they have a, a red number and another number. A on blue the other number, side. I think it yeah. is. Yeah. So one is damage, one is health. Yeah. And like what Mark just said, it is um, persistent health. And the example in the bottom left paragraph basically said, like, if you attacked an X-Wing versus a TIE Fighter, they both do two damage. The X-Wing has three health. The TIE Fighter has one health. They do damage simultaneously, so they would both lose two. So the yep. TIE Fighter would be destroyed. The X-Wing would remain on one health. Yes, uh, there, I, there are mechanics, which uh, you, it's going to make you chuckle when you do this, which is sort of like comparable to First Strike in Magic, that say uh, if two units attack or fight each other, then the one with this ability shoots or attacks before the other one does. Uh, guess who shoots first or has a, a similar ability along those lines? <laughs> Greedo. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. Gre Greedo is what I was thinking of. I bet you were. Okay, so they said that's how combat works as its simplest. Um, some other units also have like an on attack ability. So I guess maybe like when they shoot, they might do splash damage or yep. something like that. They Special didn't really triggers. Yep. cover that. Um, and then they also said some units have defensive abilities. Like uh, there's a sentinel ability, which basically means if you have the sentinel ability, they cannot choose to bypass you yep. and attack your base. Because I don't know, if you have like a uh, X-Wing, maybe you can either kill the opponent's yep. TIE Fighter, or you could attack the base. If the TIE Fighter did have Sentinel, then you don't have a choice. If you're going to yeah. attack, you have to attack the Sentinel ability. It means you can basically have tanks. That's how yeah. I would classify them. So if you play Obi-Wan Kenobi, then they cannot attack your base till they kill Obi-Wan Kenobi, because he is a tank. Obi-Wan so, can be a Sentinel. Chewbacca can be a Sentinel. All of that, yeah. So if you ignore your opponent's... Uh, so let's use the TIE Fighter and the X-Men example. Yep. You think, right, I'm going to ignore that TIE Fighter. I'm just going to shoot at the base. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to do my damage direct to the base. Does the yep. TIE Fighter still get to shoot my X-Wing? No. Or... The TIE Fighter will only get to shoot back if you if your unit is attacking that TIE Fighter. Um, okay. At which point they're in a fight, they engage each other, the damage goes both ways. So if... assuming you haven't got any Sentinel units, why would you not just blow up the base? In so everything to... into the base from the word go. If you kill your enemy's units, then you establish board control for the following turn. At which point you've got a lot of units and they've got none and you can just go all ham the, the turn after. Yeah, it's it's a, it's tactics. Tony, you might want to try and rush their base down super quick, and some people will bring uh, rushed X, which is just lo lots of little creatures designed to just you know chip damage you from very first turn. They'll just be playing creatures that only do one damage. Yep. Just be going straight after your base, trying to chip you down. But then you start putting down your big ones, and like Mark said, creating board control. Then if you get to that situation, then you'll be like, right now I own the board. Your one damage creatures. The second you play them, I just kill them and I own the board. You know. So it's 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 tactics. It's um, can you can you fight with more than one creature? So let's go back to your example there. I've got loads of little little tiny creatures. Yep. And my opponent's got an AT-80. Can all of my little tiny guys attack that AT-80 to wear him down? Yes. Or once I've attacked him, is he now engaged with that one unit, assuming it's not dead, so each, nobody else can fight him? Each turn, you have the alternating activations. So let's say the person with the horde of weenies facing the ATST goes first. One weenie attacks the ATST. The weenie dies, does one point of damage to the walker. Then the walker attacks and either stomps on the base or kills a weenie. Then it's the person who's the weenie's turns go. They attack the ATST again. Weenie dies. The ATST takes another point of damage and keeps going and going and going all one at a time until they choose not to or the walker dies. Can the walker fight back loads of times? So if he's once. attacked loads of times, he can fight back loads of times? Or can a he... unit can only attack if it's, un... if it's ready, if it's not exhausted. So right. after the walker's exhausted to attack, it can't do anything. That so it can't defend turn. itself anymore, and all the little Ewoks it can always jump defend down itself, and... but it can't actively choose to go and attack something. No, no, no. But if if another Ewok attacks it, yeah. it will shoot that Ewok too. Yeah, right. It'll, yeah. it'll always fight back if something engages it. Okay. So, so you that yeah, that's so, the so you can't just attack it with a crap thing you don't care about. Let that die, and then bring in the stuff you do care about to finish it off because it <laughs> can't shoot you anymore. Correct. Um, okay, uh, let's move on, shall we? It's worth noting very quickly as well, though, there is a event in the game called Vanquish, which is mm -hmm. a five-resource card that you can play that says, see that unit over there, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> it's dead. Okay. So there's always something. Mm -hmm. That's a fireball for magic. 
Yeah, 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 yeah you're absolutely right. Uh, okay, so this shows you, you know, tapping to do damage to the base. So you do three damage, you put three on the base, it's down to 27. Uh, here, I guess, if you look at this rebel unit, it's got a three and a seven, and the mm -hmm. stormtrooper has a three and a one. So obviously they do three damage to the one hit point of the stormtrooper, kill the stormtrooper, the stormtrooper does three damage to the seven of the rebel unit, we put three damage on it. So that rebel unit after that combat is now essentially a three, four. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't lose any offensive output by getting degraded or anything like that. Correct. It just, it's now more vulnerable to getting killed off. Yeah. Unless yes. it's got an ability on there or text or power that says otherwise, that is the mm -hmm. basic mechanic. Yes, that's right. So there's definitely turns where, you know, you know, you can know because you, you will always have like four cards in your hand, right? Or maybe if you don't play a card every turn, you could have more. So you can always be looking two turns ahead and go, if I do take two hit points off his base with these weak creatures, then I can use my turbo laser to do five damage and win the game. But I need to, you know, like I need to ignore something or there, there's a lot of play uh, in yeah. there. And and this is a good example of... And you'll of... find as the game goes on and you just play it, you start with your two resources, you play another one each turn. There will come a time where you've got so many resources, you're just able to play everything in your hand if you want to, and the game reaches a critical mass and things just start dying left, right, and center. Yep. All right, let's let's go. Because you can play more than one card a turn. You just, you just you need play as many resources. cards as you've got the resources to fuel them. Mm -hmm. So that's what controls the tempo of the game. Perfect. All right, next slide. So using action abilities... Um, Obviously, we can perform uh, actions similar. They have a resource cost in the very top left. For example, Admiral Ozil has an action ability at the cost of exhausting him. be too close to the system. Uh, so when you play his action or when you, you use his action, you would tap him or exhaust him. So um, I'm, I'm yep. sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, this ability allows your op opponent to ready a unit as well as you. So basically, both players can... I can tap out yeah, Admiral Ozil. I can ready one of my units, but you can yep. ready one of your units as well. So if I have like another really strong creature and you only have an Ewok, I get to ready my really strong creature again, you get well, to ready your Ewok. It's not just readying one. You get to play a unit from your hand and pay its cost at the same time, but it comes into play ready rather than exhausted. So you can deploy... A big unit from your hand and attack with it straight away rather than having to wait for the following turn yeah um okay uh leader cards also have a special case in addition to most leaders having a normal action they also have an epic action this functions like a normal action except that each epic action can only be performed once per game each leader has an epic action that allows you to deploy them as a unit so long as you're controlling enough resources uh, this is always a big moment in the game since your leader comes into play ready and tends to be stronger than any other typical unit. However, your, your leader is defeated, they flip back to their horizontal side, and since you already used their epic action, you won't be able to deploy them again during the game. So that sounds quite cool. Yeah. So just a brief bit more explanation on that one. Uh, if we look there and you see Luke in the middle, Luke is a leader card. Leaders have a horizontal mode, and on the flip side, they're vertically oriented. When they're horizontal, they're like a strategic buff to your entire deck and game area. When you deploy them or, or play your epic action to turn them into like somebody on the battlefield, they they stop being a strategic buff and they walk onto the field with their lightsaber or their guns and they kick ass. And if they die, then they go back to being a strategic buff in your board once again, as they were previously. But they can only ever do that once per game. So when they're a like in-play active unit, yeah. So they lose the abilities they had when they were a strategic unit. Correct. They lose what is on the horizontal side of their card and gain what is on the vertical side of their card. And I imagine what this means is you get tons of customization because there'll be tons of different leaders and oh, yeah. that should actually be really, really uh, interesting. And picking your leader will be how you define a massive part of the flavor of your deck along with customizing the aspects it gives you access to, which are the two little colored symbols underneath the two on admiral Ozzel, um and whatever cards you want to put in your de deck as well perfect so so there so when you talked about units coming to play exhausted and and bursting down the opponent's base or whatever tony admiral Ozzel would be really interesting because like if you had the 
a card in your hand, I don't know, like a TIE Fighter that can do 5 damage, you could tap him, pay the 5, bring in your TIE Fighter, instantly attack their base, assuming they don't have like a Sentinel or whatever we're calling them, a tank in the space part of the map, um, and then maybe just win the game even though, you know, normally it would be like your opponent was ahead of you or something like that, just because... Mm strategy there'll, there'll be infinite amounts it's a of strategies that you can plan around yeah yeah um and you can predict that turns ahead you know you could be going well i need two to cast admiral ozil next turn and then in two turns time i'm gonna have five mana which lets me or five resources i'm gonna call it mana like a million times as well i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> all right you next said. so take initiative or pass so this is basically the final two actions um, I didn't really understand the take initiative uh, Sorry, step. I get it. I get Do you it. want to go for it? Sure. So initiative is what a player has at the start of each turn, and they get to take the first action each turn, as in play the first card or make the first attack or uh, play the first event or unit or whatever, which is fine. Once you've decided you've done enough actions each turn, playing a unit, attacking, playing an event, you may either choose to pass... Or one player per turn can take the initiative, which is a like a super pass thing. If you take the initiative, you guarantee that you have the initiative next game turn. Ah, uh, right, that so makes you a lot might of sense. Tactically choose to say take the initiative a little bit early. You could do something else, but you do it to make sure that you have the initiative next turn to disadvantage your opponent. Or maybe you've got loads of actions to do. Uh, and it's more important for you to do those actions rather than take the initiative, at which point you risk your opponent taking the initiative so they will get to act before you next turn. You weigh those two things up. That's a really good explanation, Mark. Yeah, that that's that makes so much more sense to me now. That sounds really... Um, yeah, that sounds really tactical in the late game. You know, mm. like, this is thinking a turn ahead, thinking what you can do in your next turn, thinking how many hit points are left on everyone's bases, thinking what your opponent can do. Yep. Do um, I want to attack their base for one point of damage? Is it going to make or break the game? Or should I just take the initiative? You weigh up the pros and the cons of that. Yep. So w once you've taken the initiative, though, that's you done. Yeah, for your... you count as having essentially passed, which means you can now take n no more actions for the rest of that turn. You're done. So you, if your opponent had two or three cards, they could just cast them all now. Yeah. They're they're happy to... And it, the alternative actions goes away. Exactly. Okay. The, the alternating ends. So when that has happened, someone's so, the, so there's almost no reason to take the initiative unless there's some sort of crazy play where you do want to be second. So you take the initiative or you pass, you end your turn, and then we go into the regroup phase, which is basically almost like resetting. If we go into the next slide, um, we have basically like, uh, they called it rest, resource, and regroup. So basically you would untap all of your cards, um, and then you would also... So basically anything that was exhausted turns back up the right way. Yep. Uh, so it would be your units, your resources. Um, every, potentially every resource you've used, yeah. Every yep. unit that you've you've used. Uh, the first step is then you draw two cards from the top of your desk, your deck. Um, and then in the second step, you may choose one card from your hand. It doesn't need to be one of the two you just drew, any card from your hand. And you can put that into play as a resource now. So basically, at the end of the turn, you untap everything, get two new cards, and choose whichever card you feel has the least value to be yeah. a resource card. Which is a point of difference to Magic, because in Magic, you can only play a, one land card down every turn, and they are your resources. But if you haven't drawn any land, you don't have any, tough, you're going to fall behind the resource curve compared to your opponent. Whereas in this game, you can choose any card from your hand to be the next resource. So, in theory you should never fall behind the resource curve compared to your opponent. It does say you can choose to put the resource down or not, yep. but I think it basically says it highly recommends you should always put down a resource card. Yeah. So you, if it, you're at like seven or eight resources, the game might be over next turn. You might choose not to, just so that you can play all the cards in your hand and just do a big attack. Yeah, and then it does say there is some other ways to get resources. There is maybe like a super laser technician card or resupply card. In Magic, there were similar cards where you could occasionally generate an extra point of mana or something they, like that. They do so, exist. They, they have been shown they do exist, yeah. They do exist. But the problem is when you flush... Sorry, when you, when you shuffle your deck at the start, if you have one card in your 50 cards that's going to be that extra bonus resource that could literally be on the bottom of your deck and you have no idea where it is inside your deck... 
So you can't sit around waiting for like, hey, I hope I draw that extra resource card now. You almost just need to at the start of the game, like you said, oh, every turn uh, just put a resource. Some in. Maths here. Your starting hand is six. You can mm -hmm. mulligan for another six. That's twelve cards out of your fifty card deck. I thought you put and all your you... cards back in though when you mulligan and reshuffle, don't you? Is that what it said? Either way, you, you, does, yeah. you're still going through 12, essentially. So while there's a chance you could redraw, um, if there's three copies of that card in your in your deck, then your chances of pulling one, they're not small. No, I suppose if there's three, yeah, sure. Okay. All right, well, there's something to consider, I guess, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, any questions before we go forward again? No, I think, no. I, think I understand that. All right, yep. slide 12 of 13. Uh, so the final step of the regroup, you and your opponent ready all of your exhausted cards. I think I already said that. Yeah, this yeah. just is a nice animation of showing us unexhausted them. Um, and once yeah. you've done that, play proceeds back to the action it's, it's phase. great animation. Look at that animation. Uh, <laughs> stuff right there. It's, it's brilliant, isn't it? I was going to say, with the player who has the initiative counter taking the first action, and now yes. we're in turn two. So that and, will be the player who did take initiative. We'll, we'll have that, yeah. Uh, yep. And then that's it. That's how you play the game. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Everything else is uh, an enhancement or complication above those basic rules. So hopefully now you've come to know our beautiful faces. Where did you get that picture from? <laughs> from your which, Facebook. Which one? The one of you. <laughs> from both of your Facebook pages. Uh, and my Facebook page as well. I look about 50 years older. Anyway, this is beautiful. We are here to tell you about Star Wars Unlimited, not Legion. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is the Unlimited Power TCG YouTube channel. Thank you so much yeah. for watching. If you got this far in the video, I super appreciate yeah, it. We'll Leave a like. We'll be playing games. We'll be going over decks. We'll be looking at cards. We'll be working out how things go. We'll be advising you how you want to play. And we'll be hopefully just having a bit of a laugh as we do. Yeah. And uh, we'll be doing everything, I guess, from like top level strategy to Tony learning the game. So regardless of where you end up in that segment of players, veterans of TCGs or people that haven't played in 20 years, we should be able to help you out, right? Might uh, have that's... to drive over to your house, Tony, with a couple of decks and just like take you through a game or two or something. I think you might. Say. It's probably going to be the easiest way of doing it. But, but that's, why this, that's why this channel is so good. We've got, we've got Mark at the top there with his expert knowledge of how to play games and you've got John with enthusiasm. And then you've got me being cynical and old at the bottom here. Yeah. <laughs> Taking you uh, through the absolute nice bare bones. For... I'm sure you'll do fine. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this. Yeah. Uh, if you have any comments you want to leave, please do. And if there's any videos that you would like to see about the game, uh, leave us a comment and we'd certainly have a look at it. Yep. Yeah. See you in the next one. Cheers, Talk guys. to you guys soon. Bye.